begin the meeting. All right then. So welcome everyone and welcome to our February 16th, 2021 uh, council meeting. Um, I'm gonna call this meeting to order and remind everyone to turn their cell phones off or place them on vibrate. Um, declaration of pecuniary interest if it arises, uh, remind you of that. And we have minutes here from a special council meeting January 27th and a regular council meeting February 2nd. So I'll look for a motion to receive those minutes or if there's any questions or concerns with them, let us know now. Moved by Councillor Webb that we receive the minutes. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Giroux. All in favor? And that's carried. Um, next, uh, we're going to go into a public uh, zoning bylaw amendment meeting. I'll look for a motion to go into that meeting. I'll move, Mr. Mayor. Okay, moved by Councillor Ellis, seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, so um, the reason for this uh, zoning bylaw amendment is for uh, Gavin Maranica. I hope I pronounced that right, but uh, this is a statutory public meeting held under Section 34 of the Planning Act. The owners, applicants are Gavin Maranica. The property is described as part of Lot 30, Concession 8, having a municipal address 120 Fire Road 85D, Methuen Ward, having a property roll number of 15310100074300. Any person may attend the public meeting and make verbal or written representation either in support of or in opposition of the proposed zoning bylaw amendment. Please keep your video off and microphone muted uh, during the meeting until you're invited to make comments on the matter. If a person or public body does not make oral submission at the public meeting or make written submission to the Township of Havelock, Belmont, Methuen before the proposed zoning bylaw is passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Havelock, Belmont, Methuen to the local planning appeal tribunal. If a person or public body or does not make an oral submission at the public meeting, or make written submissions to the Township of Havelock, Belmont, Methuen before the proposed zoning bylaw amendment is passed, the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of the appeal before the local planning appeal tribunal, unless in the opinion of the tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to add the person or public body as a party. If you wish to be notified of the passing of the zoning bylaw amendment, you must make a written request to the Township of Havelock, Belmont, Methuen. With that, I'll turn it over to Laura. And you have anything thank to you. add there, Laura? Uh, thank you very much, Mayor Martin. Nope, that just about covers it. Um, the purpose of this application is to present for the consideration and requisite approval of council an application to amend comprehensive zoning bylaw number 1995-42 in order to permit the redevelopment of the uh, subject lot in the form of a single detached vacation dwelling inclusive of an attached lakeside deck and to reduce the side yard setback. Um, those um, those noted in those site specific uh, regulations noted in the attached bylaw. So the recommendation is that subject to any new information or public comments received uh, that the draft bylaw be passed as presented. This application is to permit the teardown and rebuild of a recreational dwelling. As proposed, the dwelling and deck would be set back 22.25 meters uh, from the high water mark and 19.51 uh, meters from the high water mark, respectively, the dw dwelling and deck. The vacation dwelling, as proposed, would be 6.8 meters in height at the lakeside or front elevation. Uh, the existing high water mark setback to the deck is 19.2 meters and 21.34 meters to the recreational dwelling. So the proposed is an improvement on the existing. The side yard setback is proposed to be reduced to 4.4 meters, which is the most appropriate considering the topography of the property. Uh, finally, the lot coverage for this would, for this application would increase to 10.76%, which is in keeping with the SR zone. Okay, thank you. So, um... So being a Zoom meeting, I guess the first thing I'll ask here, is there anyone that wishes to speak in favor of this application? 
Hi there, it's Holly Richards Conley. I am the agent for the Muranacas. I'm just here on the line to answer any questions that council may have. Okay, thank you. Um, is there anyone else there wishing to speak in favor of this application? Third time, anybody wishing to speak in favor? Is there anybody wishing to speak against this application? Second time, anybody wishing to speak against? Third time, anybody wishing to speak against? Hearing none, is there any questions from council or uh, from with regards to this? Deputy Mayor Jarrell. Thank you, Mayor Martin. So Laura, at this time we haven't had any concerns at all. You haven't had anything? Uh, so through you, Mr. Mayor, we have had one letter of support from a Mr. Ron Chatterton of 172 Fire Route 82D, so a neighbor, and that was dated January 28th, 2021. That's the only comment we've received. Thank you, Laura. Okay, so if there's no other uh, questions or comments, I would look for a motion that we go out of this uh, zoning bylaw mean, meeting and uh, back into the public side of it. Moved by Councillor Webb, seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor? And that's carried. So we do have one bylaw here for this. If you wanted to take care of it now, we could get it out of the way and then uh, move on to the minor variances. What's your thoughts? Okay, so the one, uh, the zoning bylaw amendment here is, uh, is there a short reading there, Bob? Or what do you need from that, from that bylaw? No, through you, Mayor Martin. Just the zoning bylaw amendment um, as per the application by Muranaka. Okay, thank you. So what's council's thought? Councillor Webb, go ahead. So I thought you are just looking for a motion to move out of yep. the okay. okay. So you're gonna move that? Yep. Moved by Councillor Webb that we uh, approve the, move the bylaw. Is there a seconder here? Councillor Pomeroy? All in favor? And that's carried. Okay, thank you. Um, with that, I'll look for a motion to go into uh, minor variances with uh, Deputy Mayor Giroux in the chair. So we'll move, Mr. Mayor. Moved by Councillor Ellis, seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor? And that's carried. So go ahead, Dave. All right, thank you, Mayor Martin, members of council. I'll call this committee of adjustment meeting to order and remind the members of the committee of the requirements under the uh, disclosure to declare any pecuniary interest or general nature thereof if the occasion arises. This public meeting is held under section 45 of the Planning Act and its regulations. And we will deal with three minor variances I do believe today under that same act. So I will now ask Laura, our planner, to provide those three reports. Thank you, Laura. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, for the first application, the subject property information is as follows. The property owners are Lori and Garth Scully. The agent is Molly Conlin. The municipal address is 250 Green Island, which is on Cashawag Lake. The roll number is 1531-010-009-35100. Uh, it is considered to be Methune Part Island 329E. The area is 2.535 acres. Uh, seasonal residential island zoning, shoreline residential designation for the official plan, and it is in the Methune Ward. It is known as Minor Variance Application A-18-20. Uh, the purpose is to seek relief from Section 4.37 to permit the construction of an addition located 16.9 meters from the high water mark and to permit an increase in height to five meters on a seasonal residential island property having the following effects. To permit the construction of an addition located 16.9 meters from the high water mark and to permit an increase of height to five meters. The recommendation is that minor variance application A-18-20 for the construction of an addition located in the water yard be approved with the following conditions. That the development be done in accordance with the site plan submitted. That any requisite approval be received by applicable approval authorities prior to the building permit being issued. That a building permit be issued within 12 months of the approval of this application. 
and that the balance of the report received by council and the committee of adjustment be received. At this time, we have received note from Crow Valley Conservation Authority that they have no concerns regarding this application and no further comments have been received. As noted in the report, this application is to construct an addition located 16.9 meters from the high water mark with an increase in height to five meters. This application meets the four tests of the minor variance and is in keeping with the provincial policy statement in Greater Golden Horseshoe. As such, it is my recommendation that this application be approved. Okay, thank you for that report, Laura. And I will ask, uh, is the applicant present today? Uh, yes, this is Molly Conlon, I'm the applicant. All right, thank you, Molly. We just put that into our records. Is, is there anyone present wishing to speak in opposition to this application today? Hearing none, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Do you have anything to add, Molly? Uh, no, I think Laura covered it. All right, I'll ask the members of the committee if there are any questions or comments. Go ahead, Mayor Martin. Yeah, so it seems pretty straightforward. So I'd be prepared to make a motion that we approve application A1820 uh, with the recommendations provided here. All right, thank you, Mayor Martin. We have a mover, do I have a seconder? We have thank a seconder. You, thank you, Councillor Ellis. So we have a mover and a seconder. Councillor Ellis, any further discussion? I'll call the motion. All in favor? That motion is carried. So thank you, Laura. You can carry on with the second application then. Thank you very much. This is for application A-19-20 and this property information is as follows. The property owners uh, is Jenna Clements. The municipal address is 91 Big Island, roll number 1531-010-003-35300. It's known as Big Island. The area is 1.36 acres. The zoning is seasonal residential island. The official plan designation is shoreline residential and it is in the Belmont board. The purpose of this application is to seek relief from section 4.37 along with sections 12.2.1G to permit the construction of an addition with an increased overall lot coverage on a seasonal residential island property having the following effects. To permit the construction of a deck in addition located at 5.602 meters and 10.2 meters from the high water mark respectively, as well as a small addition at the rear of the cottage and to permit an increased lot coverage to 4.5%. The recommendation is that minor variance application A-19-20 for the construction of an addition located in the water yard be approved with the following conditions. That the development be done in accordance with the site plan submitted, that any requisite approval be received by the applicable approval authority prior to the building permit being issued, and that a building permit be issued within 12 months of the approval of this application, and finally, that the balance of the information in the report is received. Crow Valley Conservation Authority has indicated they have no concerns with this application, and no further comments have been received. As noted, this application is to permit, a, is to permit the construction of an addition located 5.602 meters from the high water mark, and to allow for an increase in lot coverage of 4.5%. This application meets the four tests of the minor variance and is in keeping with the provincial policy statement and the Greater Golden Horseshoe. It is my recommendation that this application be approved. All right, thank you, Laura. So is the applicant present with us today? Yes, hi, it's John Clements, I'm present. Thank you, just for our records. Is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition of this application? Hearing none, is there one, anyone wishing to speak in favor of the application? Okay. Are there any questions then from the, the committee of this application? Members of the committee? I just make Councillor Webb. Yeah, I was just going to make a motion that we uh, approve the recommendations of uh, the planner. 
Thank you, Councilor Webb. Do I have a mover? Do I have a seconder? Councilor Pomeroy. <clears throat> Any further discussion on this application? If not, I'm going to call the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Thank you, members of the committee. And one more, I do believe, Laura. Yes, one more. Thank you. Uh, this is for application A-01-21. The subject property information is as follows. The property owner is Dave Pitts. The agent is Trevor Day. The municipal address is 337-Fireroot-82D. Roll number is 15310100098500. Uh, part lot 15, concession 7. The area is 1.42 acres. The zoning is seasonal residential. The official plan designation is shoreline residential and this property is in the Methune Ward. The purpose is to seek relief from section 4.37 to permit the construction of an attached deck located at 8.23 meters from the high water mark to permit an addition located at 10.57 meters from the high water mark and to permit a second attached open deck to the rear of the cottage on a seasonal residential property. The recommendation is that minor variance application A-01-21 for the construction of two attached decks in an addition located in the water yard be approved with the following conditions. That the development be done in accordance with the site plan submitted. That any requisite approval be received by applicable approval authorities prior to the building permit being issued that the property owner provides a completed environmental impact study to the municipality and to Crow Valley Conservation Authority, and that the EIS shows that there will be no impact, no impact on the unevaluated wetland to the rear of the property, that a building permit be issued within 12 months of the approval of this application, and that the balance of the information in the report be received. Crow Valley has indicated that they have no concerns with this application and no further comments have been received. As noted in the report, the application is to construct an addition located 10.57 meters from the high water mark, as well as a rear deck and a front deck with a high water mark setback of 8.23 meters. This application meets the four tests of the minor variance and is in keeping with the provincial policy statement and the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe. It is my recommendation that this application be approved. And I'd just like to note to the committee that uh, Mr. Pitts is aware that the environmental impact study needs to be done, and I believe it is completed, but it just hasn't been reviewed yet. All right, thank you, Laura. Now you cut out just a little bit when you came to the test the minor variants, and I'm sure that you said that they were all clear, right? I did. thank you. Wow. I've got two little kids watching TV on the same internet connection as the Zoom meeting, so yes, um, it it meets the four tests of the minor variants. All right, thank you. I just wanted to clear that up. So, is the applicant present with us today? Uh, yes, I'm here today, but my agent, uh, Trevor Day, is here also to answer any questions you may have, sir. All right, thank you very much. Um, is there anyone present wishing to speak in opposition of this application with us? Hearing none, is there uh, anyone wishing to speak in favor of this application? Anything to add, Trevor? Uh, Noah, Laura covered it all there. We, uh, the EIS is uh, essentially complete and uh, all the other conditions um, are, are, uh, are what we've expected and, and are acceptable. All right, thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the members of the <laughs> Committee of Adjustment? Councillor Ellis? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, um, I would uh, just like to comment that all the proper steps have been uh, Matt here and through the recommendations of our planner, I would uh, move that we approve the recommendation of our planner. All right, thank you. We have a mover. Councillor Ellis, do I have a seconder? Councillor Webb. Any further discussion? Call a motion. All in favor? That motion is carried. Thank you very much for your reports, Laura. Uh, Councillor Webb. I just, I, I had something pop up on my screen there. I don't know if it was a question from somebody that's in on the meeting, but they had a question for Laura, I think, about what lake that property was on. Yeah, and she answered. So through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, that was from, yeah, that was from Alexandra, and I answered okay. her in the I'm chat. Sorry. I'm just learning the Zoom stuff still. 
That's okay. We all good then? Yeah. If we are, I would uh, take a motion to return the gavel back to the mayor this morning. Mayor Martin, Councillor Webb and Councillor Ellis. All in favor? You have the gavel, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. All right, thank you, Deputy Mayor Jarrell. Um, next, we're gonna move into delegations and our de we have one delegation listed here and that's full 10 planning and design. Um, we have Mike Keen and uh, Montana Coletta um, here with us. So um, we can move right into that. And that's with regards to the boathouses uh, with Jack's Lake, the background report. Welcome, Mike. Yes, good morning, uh, Mayor and, and Councillors. I see lots of familiar faces. So it's been, been many years since I've had the chance to speak with you. So look forward to... Uh, doing a presentation to you today regarding boathouses. My colleague Montana Coletti is going to deliver the presentation and I'm just wondering formality wise, do you want me to share screen or I'm just trying to look at how exactly uh, you wanna do this? If it's possible, it does help with uh, yeah. whether you, if you could do that, that would be good or, or beyond, it helps yeah, with I, I can share my screen and then that will make it smoother for uh, Montana delivering the actual words as well. So I'll do that and then I'll mute and let Montana uh, take over from there. So one moment. Can everyone hear me okay? Yep. Okay. One second. Hang on one second. Sharing the correct screen. I don't think No, so. it's your email. Yeah, hang on. Let me just, <laughs> just yeah, sorry, that's what you get when you I feel like the older I get, the more uh, the more technically challenged I become as well. One second. I can do this. <laughs> there was some bad stuff in those emails, but we won't think. <laughs> yeah. Nothing terrible, I know that much. <laughs> Just have to just to share again. That looks like that's correct now. Yep, that looks good. There you go. Okay. So good morning, Mr. Mayor and members of council. My name is Montana Coletti, and I'm a land use planner at Foten Planning and Design in the city of Kingston. So FOTEN was engaged by the township in December of 2020 to undertake a review of the regulation of on-land boathouses on Jack's Lake, recognize Jack Lake as a cold water lake and acknowledge the act capacity development status of Sharps Bay. FOTEN has prepared a background report to summarize our findings and provide recommendations for additional official plan policies and zoning bylaw provisions, which align with the direction of both the township and the county. So I'm here today with my colleague, Michael Keen to present to you the findings of our background report. Next slide, please. So Jack Lake lies within the townships of HBM and North Kawartha. The lake features numerous islands and channels which divide the lake into four distinct basins. The image on this slide shows an aerial view of Jack Lake illustrating the township boundary and the portion of the lake which is regulated by North, the township of North Kawartha. So in the blue, we see the township of North Kawartha, and in the orange, we see the township of Havelock, Belmont, Methune, and then Jack's Lake is outlined in black. Next slide, please. So the image on this slide illustrates the extent of the Sharps Bay Basin, shown in red, which is the largest and deepest of the four lake basins. In 2006, the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry delisted Jack Lake as a natural lake trout lake as it was believed the species population had been eradicated. However, netting programs completed by the Ministry in 2008 and 2009 collected lake trout of different sizes and ages from several shoals in Sharks Bay. Further capacity assessments were undertaken in collaboration with the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change. And this work included an assessment of oxygen and phosphorus levels in Sharks Bay, which are key indicators of water quality. The collected water quality data determined that Sharks Bay was at capacity for development 
and that municipal land use planning decisions around Sharps Bay should not result in a net increase to phosphorus loading to the lake, impacts to habitat or reductions to lakeshore carrying capacity. Sharps Bay was relisted by the ministry as a lake trout lake in 2015, and to date, amendments have not been completed to the township's official plan or zoning bylaw to reflect the at capacity status of Sharps Bay. Next slide, please. So in 2009, council directed staff to undertake a study to determine an appropriate size limitation for dry land boathouses in the township. As part of the exercise, an online survey was provided to all the lake and cottage associations within the township. The survey had an overwhelming response from Jack Lake residents, emphasizing the desire for a general ban of dry land boathouses on Jack's Lake. It should be noted that a majority of respondents also indicated a desire to continue to permit the repair and reconstruction of existing on-land boathouses within their original size and location. Given the overwhelming response from Jack Lake residents, Council directed staff to move forward with official plan and zoning bylaw amendments to prohibit the development of dry land boathouses on Jack Lake. Next slide, please. The township's current zoning bylaw has the following provisions in place to regulate boathouses in the township. It provides a definition for boathouse and marine facility. It prohibits on-water boathouses throughout the, the township. It permits on-land boathouses in the yard abutting the high water mark, and further regulations are provided through the provisions for accessory buildings, which are limited to a maximum height of 4.5 meters. In 2011, the township initiated the process to approve a new official plan. An update to the comprehensive zoning bylaw was to occur at the same time, which would align the zoning bylaw with the policies of the new official plan. Um, the new official plan and zoning bylaw were adopted by Council in November of 2012. However, both documents were appealed to the Ontario Municipal Board. And while these documents did provide additional regulations for boathouses, they remain under appeal and are not currently in effect. Next slide, please. So FOTEN has completed a review of neighboring municipalities to provide perspective on shoreline and in-water regulations in other jurisdictions to ensure that a consistent approach is applied within the township of HBM. The township of North Kawartha currently prohibits the development of boathouses throughout the township. However, existing boathouses may be rebuilt, repaired, or strengthened in accordance with the zoning bylaw. The township of Duro Drummer currently prohibits in-water boathouses. However, on-land boathouses are still permitted. It is recommended that a similar approach as North Kawartha be taken in the township of HBM to ensure that there is a consistent approach to boathouse regulation on the entirety of Jack Lake. Next slide, please. The township's official plan provides policy direction for lake trout at capacity lakes, which indicates that the township will work to identify lakes that have reached development capacity. In keeping with the findings of the ministry, we recommend adding a provision to recognize Sharps Bay of Jack's Lake as being at capacity for development with respect to additional nutrient loading, which may adversely affect water quality. Development and site alterations will not be permitted on a highly sensitive lake trout lake unless it can be demonstrated through site-specific studies that there will be no negative impacts to the lake. So here we have our policy in full. Um, I basically just summarized what it says, but it would recognize Jackson, Sharps Bay of Jacks Lake as an out capacity lake trout lake. Next slide, please. It is also proposed to add additional policies to the official plan to recognize the entirety of Jack Lake as a cold water lake. Development on cold water lakes shall generally only take place in a manner that does not adversely affect habitat essential to the maintenance of a healthy cold water fishery. Next slide, please. It is also proposed to add an additional section to the official plan to provide policy direction for boathouses on Jack Lake in accordance with the findings of the ministry. This section would read, the development of boathouses is prohibited on Jack Lake, notwithstanding existing boathouses may be rebuilt, repaired, or strengthened in accordance with the provisions of the zoning bylaw. Next slide, please. We recommend that the following changes be made to the township zoning bylaw to ensure it aligns with the proposed official plan policies. 
So this would include amending the definition of existing to recognize existing boathouses as boathouses lawfully existing as the date that the zoning bylaw would be passed and adding subsection 4.22.2, which speaks to marine facilities on water to prohibit the development of on-land boathouses on Jack Lake and notwithstanding existing boathouses may be rebuilt, repaired, or strengthened in accordance with the provisions of section 4.10 of the bylaw. The proposed changes provide flexibility to allow for the re repair or reconstruction of existing structures while prohibiting the development of new boathouses. Next slide, please. So in summary, the township's official plan provides a good basis to establish more contemporary regulation over shoreline development, similar to what we see in the neighboring township of North Kawartha, which currently prohibits the development of boathouses on a portion of Jack Lake. We recommend that boathouses be prohibited on the entirety of Jack Lake to ensure appropriate protections are in place to preserve species habitats, minimize the potential increase in phosphorus loading to the lake. Next slide, please. So the image on this slide outlines our current progress and the next steps moving forward. So following the completion of the background report and the presentation to council today, we are seeking direction from council to prepare applications for official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment. Following the submission of the applications, we will seek direction from council to hold a public meeting, which will provide an opportunity for the public to comment on the proposed policies and provide additional feedback. A recommendation report will then be prepared and presented to council. And this report will assess the feedback received from the public and include the proposed amendment text. FOTEN will then present the recommendation report to council and council will make a decision on the applications for official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment. Next slide, please. That concludes my presentation and myself and my colleague, Michael King, would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. I think you're muted. You're muted, Jim. I have to do it once in a meeting just to see if everybody's really listening to me. So um, anyways, it's, uh, yeah, thank you for the report and uh, um, yeah, it will, uh, we'll take questions from council. This is something that's been going on for a long time and uh, um, unfortunately it got held up, but this uh, one screen that you had with where the process is at and where we're going um, is a good, good shot of, uh, we're trying to get to the public meeting. Normally these things, we try to deal with them over, like when everybody's here. So it's usually between May and October. Um, with COVID, everything's been kind of, slowed up and we're just trying to keep things moving. So, um, but at least this, this chart here shows where we're at and where we can go to with it. So I think it, you're totally right. We're trying to be consistent with North Kawartha. That's pretty well what uh, um, everybody would like to see. And when it comes to something like this, even though your red line on that one picture showed Sharp Bay, um, I don't think the fish and the habitat really see that red line. So it's something that, uh, you know, hopefully we can take care of the whole lake and uh, um, this looks like a good plan, but I'll open it up to council if you got any questions or comments here for Mike or Montana. Um, any questions or comments? Go ahead, Dave. Thank you, Mayor Martin. Well, Montana, thank you for the report and Mike also. Um, yeah, we're, we're, I think we're all anxious to get moving on towards a public meeting and hear the comments. We've uh, dealt with this for some time and, and uh, we're on the right track. Uh, it's nice to get a refresher because in between the last time we speak and this time, there's a lot goes through on the table. So uh, yeah, I really appreciate it this morning. It brings us all up to date again and looking forward to moving on. Thank you. Okay, and this is something I think all the lakes are going to be watching. We do have a lot of lakes in our township and uh, um, but Jack's Lake has been really strong at uh, their feelings and what they would like to see. And North Court that took the lead and it seems to have went over really well. So uh, is there any other questions from council? Okay, so, uh, so I guess it's to move on to the next step. Uh, what do you need, date, uh, Bob? What would you like to come out of this? 
after you, Mayor Martin, there is a report later in the meeting uh, further to this presentation. Uh, and I think our, our guests from FOTEN may stick around for that. So I think for now we can accept the, uh, receive the delegation and go to the report. Okay, I do have a question from one of the members in the meeting here. So it's up to council here. We normally, um, I guess they could do it as a delegation. Uh, if we are in the delegation part of it. So um, if Alex, she could put a question forward, I guess, Bob, or do we just take her as another delegation and then she can ask the question in that? Uh, through you, Mayor Martin, I'll, that is the call of the chair. We can certainly accept the question uh, as the delegation has just concluded. Okay, well, we'll see what it is here. Alexandra, if you would like to, we are in the delegation portion of the meeting. So if you wanted to put a question forward to Mike or Montana, they can see if they can answer it. If not, they can get back to you. So go ahead. Uh, can I, I'm just unmuted. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, great. It's just a really brief question. And actually, I sent it to uh, Laura this morning. I was just curious to know what the source was for having a second public forum. I believe there was a public forum on all of this uh, December 19. And we had um, Jack Lake delegation and various others speak to this. So, um, and, and I was looking for it this morning. I couldn't find a rule or regulation that indicated we needed a second uh, public forum. Um, as, as you've mentioned, Mayor uh, Martin, we, we've been at this for a long time, so the Jack Lake Association is really eager to kind of move on with this, and if we could possibly avoid, you know, another public forum, um, we'd be all for that. That's my question. Is there, is there, is it necessary? Is there a requirement, or, or is it just something that uh, you prefer to do? Okay, I think Laura has the answer to that. I'm not sure if you want to answer it, Mike, that's fine. But uh, the process there, I think the reason we're here is that wasn't really a public meeting as per se. So go ahead, Laura, and if, if Mike needs to help you out there, go, he can help you. Sure, thank you, Mayor Martin. So um, when this started in 2019, it was to look at the maximum size of a boathouse. And it's since evolved into something a little bit different. So with the prohibition or banning of boathouses on Jack Lake, that requires some new public um, input. And if I'm missing anything, Mike or Montana, feel free to jump in here. Um, through you, Mayor Martin, I'll just add something very brief. And that is, it's, it's all about planning act process. And so the Planning Act outlines the fact that we have to show the proposed amendments to the public a certain number of days in advance of a public meeting. And so really all we're doing is working with Laura and working with, with Bob and yourselves to meet those formal Planning Act requirements. But our plan is absolutely to move this expeditiously um, based on both direction of, of council and staff, even before we were contracted for this work. Okay, I think that pretty well covers it. So, um, so with that, uh, if there's no other questions from council, um, I would take a motion to receive this delegation. And like Bob said, it'll come back up in the, later in the meeting. Moved by Councillor Webb and seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor? And that's carried. Um, so is there any other uh, people here that wanted to speak as part of the delegation portion of the meeting, Bianca? If not, we'll move on. No, there's no one. Okay, I, I do see something here. Derek has a question. I don't know what, what is that, would he like to be a delegation? Is that, uh, you can be a delegation and you can present what you have there, Derek? He's muted. You, Mary Martin, we don't we don't see what the question is. I, we're not sure where that's going. Yeah, like I can take Derek as a delegation, but other than that, this portion uh, with regards to the vote houses has been received. So, Derek, if you would, do you, would you like to be a delegation? Um, my name is Rob. I'm not sure why it's coming up as Derek. Sorry um, about that. It's all right. Um, my question is, how do you plan on contacting residents for their input? Um, as far as I'm concerned, um, contacting Jack Lake Association is not appropriate. They're not a taxpayer. We are. And not everyone would get the information if you just contact Jack Lake Association. No, and so it will be circulated uh, as we do with everything else. It won't be just to the association. How are um, you going to 
excuse me, sorry for interrupting. Please continue. Not everyone's a member. Okay, so um, Bob, did you want to answer that or Laura, like how we circulate when we come to these amendments? Hi, thank you, Mayor Martin. Um, so what we'll do is we'll be putting it out on all of the social media platforms that the municipality has, as well as in uh, likely a local um, media source, probably the Havelock Rail. Um, additionally, anybody who's interested in applications um, on Jack Lake would be uh, circulated. I would also highly recommend that you subscribe to our website and you can receive emails every time an application is made for planning. And that way you stay in the loop uh, for all planning applications, not just this one. But if you are requesting that you um, specifically receive information about this, just send an email to Bianca Boynton. Uh, her email is on our council page on the website and I'll make sure that you are added to the circulation list. Thank you. Okay, so we'll take that as a delegation. So I would look for a motion to receive the delegation that we had, and we can and he can take care of that as far as getting on the on the list. Um, moved by Councillor Webb, seconded by I, my screen just jumped here, Deputy Mayor Duro. All in favor, and that's carried. So um, that's all I see for delegations here. Um, unless there's anybody else wishes to speak. Hearing none, we'll move on to the next portion of staff reports for information. And we only have one thing listed here and that's with regards to our closed session uh, meetings and letting people know when they took place. And um, that's how we've been doing it since we've been doing these uh, um, Zoom meetings. So um, I'll look for a motion to receive that report. If motion to receive, Mr. Mayor. Moved by Councillor Ellis, seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor of that? And that's carried. Next, we move into uh, staff reports uh, for uh, with follow-up action. And the first report there is to do with this uh, boathouse, uh, um, the dry land boathouse. And Laura, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Martin. So uh, the purpose of this report is to provide council with the report from FOTEN outlining recommendations for proceeding with an official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment for deeming Sharps Bay at capacity, designated Jack Lake as a cold water lake, and also providing regulations for dry land boat houses on Jack Lake. The recommendation is that council supports the recommendations made in the report by FOTEN. Okay. So council, go ahead, Councillor Webb. And just to make a motion that we uh, approve the recommendation of the plan and go with uh, what full 10 given us. Okay, moved by Councillor Webb that we go with the recommendation. Do I have a seconder? A seconder to that motion. Deputy Mayor Giroux, questions, comments? All in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Thank you, Laura. Um, Next, we have a re planning report with proposed addition to the lot, lot addition. Thank you very much. So the recommendation or the purpose of this report is to provide background information regarding a proposed right of way application and to seek direction of council. The recommendation is that council advise Peterborough County Land Division that the township would endorse an application for consent for a lot addition um, and that would be to take property approximately 1,000 square feet from roll number 1531-010003-13200 to add to a parcel of land with roll number 1531-010003-12400 as submitted by Mr. Todd Taylor, who is the property owner. Uh, the recommendation is also that a merger agreement for the parcel be added to roll number ending in 12400, that registration of title is provided to the municipality and that the balance of the report is received. Essentially, this application is to take about a thousand square feet of uh, property that was an old road allowance or right of way and add it to uh, 
the property with the roll number ending in 12400. This does not impede access as uh, the right of way that is being used is to the rear of those waterfront properties. Um, I don't think I have anything else to add. The, uh, the uh, pictures that I put up, the uh, diagrams pretty clearly outline what is being proposed here. Okay. All right, I'll open up the council. Deputy Mayor Grove, go ahead. I just, uh, Laura, thank you, Mr. Mayor Martin. I have one quick question, Laura. The, pro the, the property that is being used for the right-of-way behind the, the said properties, is that on title? How does that work? So through you, Mr. Mayor, that right-of-way that's being used for the driveways is owned by the property owner who's making the application for consent. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other questions with regards to this? I'll look for a motion to go with the recommendation here then. Councillor Ellis? Motion to approve the recommendation, Mr. Mayor. Moved by Councillor Ellis and seconded by Councillor Webb. All in favor? And that's carried. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Um, next, we have uh, ownership of a road allowance here for Murray Watson. There we go. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Um, the township has been approached by Mr. Murray Watson uh, with respect to the ownership of a road allowance situated between Lot 11 Concession 11 and Lot 11 Concession 10. Um, back in December, December 21st, uh, the township did convey uh, parts four, five, and six uh, to Mr. Watson as per the original deed uh, that was produced for this matter. However, in further communication with Mr. Watson, um, it has been determined that only part six is to be conveyed. Um, and as a result, this report corrects that and presents the updated bylaw. Okay. All right, any questions from council with regards to this? Okay, um, Councillor Ellis, then Deputy Mayor Jarreau. So it's for you, Mr. Mayor, to uh, and Gioni. So this is just basically a cleanup here. That is correct. Through you, Mayor Martin, this is a housekeeping matter and it cleans it up. That's correct. I would approve the recommendation then, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Moved by Councillor Ellis that we approve the recommendation. Deputy Mayor Giroux. I'll second that. Okay, seconded by Deputy Mayor Giroux. Um, Councillor Pomeroy, did you have anything or were you just going to second it? Okay, all in favor of the motion? And that's carried. Um, next, we have the report uh, with regards to board and committee appointments. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Um, originally, um, back in the fall, we, the township placed an advertisement for board and committee members. Um, positions were filled. There was uh, an insufficient number of applicants for the Economic Development Committee. So staff re-advertised that, that position. We now have two more applicants who have come forward, Richard Wood and J.J. Hudson. And this report requests that they be uh, approved and appointed to the committee. Okay. All right, so we'll look to council. Uh, Councillor Webb, go ahead. Yeah, just motion to approve the recommendation. Okay, moved by Councillor Webb that we approve the recommendation. Seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. Questions or comments? All in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. Next is uh, um, the planning proposal here, a request for proposal for planning services. Um, we've had the report before us. Um, there is a slight change to the to the recommendation here, Bob, is that? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. So staff did advertise a request for proposals for planning consulting services. Um, after analyzing all of the submissions, uh, staff recommended that the township be served by a multi-supplier approach and we're recommending DM Wills and FOTAN as successful bidders. However, we have subsequently been informed 
uh, by DM Wells that they are um, taking away their submission. They are no longer wishing to, to be part of that submission. So we will recommend that staff and council proceed with FOTAN as our planning consultant. Okay, what's council's thoughts? Councillor Webb, and then Councillor Pomeroy. Uh, just a question: Are we still going to? Uh, are we going to two company policy that we were talking about? Like, are we going to go out and look for somebody else, or when we choose Foten, is, are we going to be with Foten? Through you, Mayor Martin. I, I guess I would leave that to the discretion of Council. Um, we certainly recommended the multi-supplier approach, and we would be prepared to. Uh, seek an additional supplier. However, if council chooses that we carry on with one, then then that would be fine as well. Okay, follow up, Councillor Webb. Yeah, uh, well, I'll make a motion that we go ahead with the recommendation to go with FOTEN, but um, personally, I would, I would like to see staff uh, investigate, you know, um, ha having a, a backup for us in terms of another company or someone else we could go to. Okay, um, Councillor Pomeroy and then Councillor Ellis. Yes, <clears throat> excuse me, through you, Mr. Mayor, to Bob. Um, I think staff had recommended more than one, one uh, consulting. And I, I think it was, it was a good idea. I, I gotta, you know, agree with Hart and the rest of us because we, we agreed, we, everyone seemed to agree that we, we should have two, and um, then we're then we're not stuck. One one might be better at one thing, and one might be better at the other. And uh, we have uh, diversity there. So my okay. my own feeling is we we should we should maybe have staff look at it again and bring it back to council. Okay, Councillor Ellis, go ahead, and then we'll. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, without repeating uh, the other comments from fellow councillors, I think um, I would support uh, the recommendation to look for um, uh, another one to work with. Well, 10, I think there's benefits in many ways, as well as costing possibly on projects. So yeah, I'm just, I'll second the motion from Councillor Hart. Okay. So moved by Councillor Webb and seconded by Councillor Ellis that we uh, that we do follow the uh, staff recommendations and fill the other position. So um, any other questions, Dave or uh, I just want to make sure that we're going to follow through with OTAN and then go out. That's all. I, yeah. I didn't want I, I didn't want them to have the impression that we weren't in, we weren't going with them, that's all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I guess that's yeah, that was the, that we're going to continue. That's in the book. Yeah. Okay. So we'll follow through with the, the original uh, idea that we had there. So if OTEN and another. So moved by Councillor Webb, seconded by Councillor Ellis. All in favor of that motion then? And that's carried. Thank you. Um, okay. So. Next, we'll move into uh, correspondence. And we have uh, one action item here, and that's with regards to Blairton Road and, and parking on the, um, parking on Blairton Road for the bus drivers, or uh, the buses having issues there. Bob, you were dealing with this? Uh, through you, Mayor Martin, we did receive a, uh... Um, a question about this item. So it was suggested that a letter be brought forward. So we staff can certainly investigate solutions there. Um, there isn't an obvious solution at this moment, but we will investigate to see what can be done there. Okay, thank you. So um, do you want a motion to uh, direct staff to follow up with this? Yes, please. All right, moved by Deputy Mayor Giroux that we follow up with the Elwood Hamilton bus signs with regards to Blairton Road. Seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. Questions, comments? All in favor? And that's carried. 
Okay, so we have a couple other or three other items on correspondence. Uh, is there anything anybody wishes to talk about? The one was the county recognition awards are going to be cancelled again this year because of COVID. Um, other than that, the Crow Valley budget was in there and uh, the municipal brief. It's just a little outline of what's happening around the Crow. So um, if there's no questions or comments with regards to those things, we'll... Uh, Dave, Dave, go ahead. Oh, you're muted. Thank you, Mayor Martin. Uh, in regards to the uh, words and adversaries, um, it's very important. I think that we keep that in our minds for uh, 2022 and follow through, keep um, try and recognize anyone in our municipality that deserves recognition. It's going to be, uh, I think, a celebration once we come out and uh, recognize all these people for their contribution to our communities. So just keep it in mind, that's all. Thank you. Yeah, this is just the start of many things that are probably going to get canceled this spring. So, um, okay. So is there anything else in there? If not, I'll take a motion to receive the correspondence. Moved by Councillor Webb, seconded by Deputy Mayor Giroux. Um, all in favor of that? Did you have something, Barry? Okay. All right then, so we're gonna move into uh, activity reports, uh, Councillor activity reports. Uh, there's a list of things that uh, Dave and I have been involved in. I have a bunch of other things that I was on too that I didn't get in in time, but uh, um, Dave, is there anything you wanted to speak to in that? I don't. I don't think I need to explain anything there. We've been busy. Yeah, and we had minutes there from the police board, uh, police service board, uh, from ju July twentieth. Um, so a motion to receive those minutes. More cleanup going on. So. Uh, moved by Deputy Mayor Duro, seconded by Councillor Webb, and all in favor. And that's carried. And uh, to you, Mayor Martin, if I could just explain, those minutes uh, are dated uh, back in July. So most recently at the Police Services Board, they were just adopted. So that's why they're okay. coming coming to okay. Council now. Okay. It's uh, yeah, it's kind of like the uh, Crow minutes when they come. They're they're like a long time after. So. EOTA uh, is the same thing. Yeah. So anyways, uh, yeah. So with regards to all the um, virtual meetings and things I've been having uh, um, right after our last meeting, I did have a meeting with uh, um, Mary Monsip and uh, she talked about some of the things that are going on with around snowbirds returning. And uh, um, one of the things that came up is the province is being real slow at rolling out their money that the feds have gave them. So that'll be followed up this week. And uh, I did have a meeting, it was all the mayors with uh, Rick Hillier, the, um, with regards to the vaccine rollout, and he went over some things. And there's another meeting this week on Thursday with our medical officer of health. And if anybody's interested in um, sitting in on that, uh, I'll send the link to them. And uh, it's just with regards to, he talked to about phase one and phase two, and uh, we'll see where it ends up. So, Hart, you had something there? I seen your no, screen. I just like Actually, yeah, no, I was just smiling. Um, I did have a comment, Jim. Um, after the last meeting, um, I found out, the day after the last meeting, I found out that the principal over at the school, um, Michelle Bergatti, who's been with us for, I believe, four or five years, has left. So we have a new principal over at the school as of approximately a little less than two weeks ago. And her name is Tanya Lamond. I have yet to go over and have a face to face with her, obviously, because of the cold. But um, I'd just uh, like to take this opportunity. She's probably not watching, but uh, I know there's a lot of people in our community that dealt with Michelle. And um, uh, I just thought she was a great asset. I really enjoyed working with her. Um, I thought we got a lot done for the school when she was over there, and hopefully uh, Miss Lamont can continue that for us. And so um, 
I just wanted to make council aware of that, that uh, there has been a switch over there. I don't know why they would do the switch in the middle of the school year, but everything seems to be crazy these days. So um, unfortunately we've lost a very good lady. Hopefully we've, the new one they brought in will be just as good, so. Yeah, we've had some good principals over there, Art. And yeah, I did hear that a couple of weeks ago that she had left. So, um, yeah. So hopefully this one's just as good. Uh, there has been a lot of good things happening over there. So is there anything else here with regard to council activity? Dave, go ahead. Just a quick question for Councillor Webb. Would the parents have got a letter to that effect, Councillor Webb? Sorry. Did you hear it? No, I, I didn't hear any of it. <laughs> sorry, okay. sorry. Uh, Hart, would the parents have got a, um, a letter to the effect they changed principles? Yes, they did, I believe. Good, I believe thank they, you. Yeah. No, they did. Um, that was my fault, actually. I think I got the email as well, but before that meet, the meeting that morning, I just hadn't checked the email or opened. Okay, thank you. Opened that email, Dave, so found out later that day. So I just wanted to make you apprised um, that the situation had changed. Um, I was quite surprised, like I said, that they would do it in the middle of the school year. I've never heard of that, except in a, maybe an emergency situation, but um, it is what it is and we'll move on hopefully and move ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so if, is there anything else in Councillor Activity Report? If none, I'll, uh, if nothing, I'll just get, get a motion to receive those reports. Moved by Deputy Mayor Giroux. And a seconder. Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor? And that's carried. Um, I don't see any written or oral notice of motions here. Uh, so we'll move into new business. And with that, it was. Uh, the new business. The only thing I had on there is we should try and set up a, um, the next budget meeting. And I did have a, a call about um, on the Bel Belmont mid seventh line there with regards to snowmobiles. The snowmobile club did put out a message to their members to slow down on the roads. I don't know if you're getting any calls in any other roads, but uh, um, some of them are zipping down there pretty good and there's a lot of hidden driveways there. So they were wondering if there was any way of getting a sign towards the north end of it, uh, just to remind them to slow down um, in case somebody's exiting their driveway. So um, there's not too many more weeks left of this, but uh, it is something that uh, could be taken care of if council's okay with that. Larry, go ahead. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, I was just curious when your next place services board meeting is. Um, and give an opportunity to voice the concerns about the speeding of snowmobilers. Uh, I witness it here periodically. Sometimes they're very disrespectful to personal property and private property. And so I'd appreciate it if it's discussed at your next meeting or if you have a contact. I have personally talked to an OPP officer about it. Um, however, uh, I was hoping to see a bit of uh, activity by the OPPs patrolling. I haven't seen or heard of anybody seeing OPP support. But um, yeah, it's a few that just seems to want to spoil it for, for everybody. But uh, if it could be relayed to the OPP through you, Mr. Mayor, it would be great. Yeah, and it has been. And yeah, they have been out on the lake stopping people, as has the uh, MNR. So um, yeah, there's a few things going on but uh yeah it has been reported to them so um okay and larry our uh, barry go ahead sorry <clears throat> yeah i just have two or three things here the um could we have a copy of the lawyer's fees for the year uh, along with the uh, mileage and overtime of the council Okay. You want that for budget meeting or you want that today or? No, no, it, it's not on here for today, but uh, it sure would be nice to know uh, what we've spent on that. Okay. 
Yeah, and that should be a part of the budget meeting, so hopefully okay. we can have it by then. So, okay. Did you take note of that, Bob? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Yes, we've made note of it. So we will bring it to the next budget meeting. Okay. Um, Dave, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't want to back up here, but just so I, I understood you correctly when it came to the snowmobiles, have we talked to the local snowmobile club about the seventh line? Did I hear you say that? Yeah, I sent a message over to them and they uh, that day they put it on their website to uh, remind the people to slow down. So they're really prompt at it, actually. Okay, thank you. I, I thought that's what I heard, but I just wanted to double check. Well, while I have your attention, I will say that I had a doctor's appointment the other day and I see our new truck sitting at uh, in Peterborough. Hopefully we're going to get it sooner than later. After this snow, we're going to need it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So um, with regards to the budget meeting, um, I, I had suggested the 23rd next Tuesday to, um, to our budget meeting. I don't know. I can give you a few dates here. Um, any day almost next week, I think, is open. Um, so, but Tuesday seems to be our day now. So I just wonder how that works for everyone. Monday or Tuesday? Is that? Okay. Uh, is that Larry, the go ahead. Oh, sorry. Larry, go ahead. And then Dave and did you have uh, your hand? Mark? The 23rd is open on my calendar. So if that works, just so you're aware. Okay. So let's just say the 23rd. Does that work for everyone then? Okay. Art? What day was it? 23rd? The 23rd, the Tuesday. Next Tuesday? Yeah. That, what, yeah. What time? It's up to council. I like. I'm, I'm, guys, I'm off. You can have it anytime. <laughs> 9 30, does that work? Yeah. Same time? Sure. sure. 9 30 next Tuesday, the 23rd, for our next budget meeting, and hopefully we can get things moving there. So, okay. All right. So we got that, Bob? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. It has been noted February 23rd, next budget meeting, 9 30 a.m. Okay, is there any other new business from council? Seeing none, we'll move on to uh, bylaws. And so let me just get caught up here. I was doing really good. But uh, anyways, the first bylaw we've already taken care of. The second bylaw would be the bylaw with regards to Murray Watson and the conveying lands. What's it would be bylaw 2021 -07. What's your thoughts, Councillor Ellis? You're moving that? Okay, seconder. Councillor Webb, all in favor? And that's carried. Um, the next one is with regards to the ride, um, ride grant agreement. Did you want to speak to that, Bob? No, through you, Mayor Martin. The next bylaw is committee appointments for okay. economic development. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, so the yeah, the appointment of committees moved by Councillor Pomeroy and a seconder to that. Councillor Webb, all in favor? And that's carried. Now it's ride grant agreement. This is something we do every year, Bob. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin. This is an uh, an annual. Um, agreement that we have for our ride grant funding. Uh, so this is a housekeeping matter. Okay. All right then, Councillor Pomeroy. Moving that. Seconder. Councillor Webb, all in favor. And that's carried. So next we have the confirming bylaw. Uh, Councillor Ellis, go ahead. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I apologize. I missed a little item back under new business. I uh, ask if I could st still speak to it, please. Sure, go ahead. Okay. Um, we have a new bylaw enforcement gentleman. 
And normal process would be to come to the office, uh, fill out forms and so on. Uh, I'm asking if we can, as a council, if we have an issue that needs to be addressed through uh, by law enforcement, if we can do it either verbally through our CAO or send an email uh, to staff with the issue uh, as a concern. Okay, Bob, how, would, how do you wanna approach that? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin, we certainly, uh, we do require uh, uh, any complaints in writing. Um, so I, I see our, our chief building official has joined us. So perhaps I'll let John answer that question. You go ahead, John. For you, Mr. Mayor, we have been and always have to this point accepted written complaints by email, as well as ones dropped off in the mailbox at the front. So there, uh, as long as it's in writing, so if it has to go to court, we do have a copy why we're on the property. So they can do it by email, they can mail it, they can um, send it by fax or uh, mail it, drop it off in the box out front. Okay, thank you, Bob. Um, that um, addresses the issue. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, then. So next thing we have is confirming bylaws. So looking for Deputy Mayor Giroux. Confirming bylaw. Confirming bylaw. And seconded by Councillor Webb. All in favor, and that's carried. And the next one is adjournment. Councillor Pomeroy and seconder, Councillor Webb. All in favor, and that's carried. So we do have a closed session. I just wonder what council's thoughts are of, you know, looking at going into it at 11 o'clock. I wonder if we could do it by Zoom. I'm, my, I think I'm gonna do the Zoom thing here today, Bob. 